Hi, I'm Sam Horn. This is what's coming up next on What Is Your Pregame? What would be something Jackie Bradley would cook if I was coming over to your house for dinner? So I think that if I want to be on top of my game or I want to do something, I will always have a plate of stress or fun. <laughs> which, which, one, which one is it? Or is it a little bit of both? Hi, and welcome to What Is Your Pregame? My name is Sam Horn, and I'll be your host. And over the next 30 minutes, we're going to try to find out who has the high performance recipe for success? Our guest, Jackie Bradley Jr., one of the most beloved center fielders in all of the game. We'll also hang out with Sam Kennedy after he just signed that new extension to find out if he's having fun or if it's stress. Also, we'll get some tips from some of your favorite players on how to deal with pressure. So sit back and relax as we bring you What Is Your Pregame? I'm here with one of the premier center fielders in all of the game, Jackie Bradley Jr. How you doing, buddy? Good. How are you, Sam? All right. Thank you for joining me for lunch today. How, how's things going? Going well. Um, about to have a, a pretty good lunch. Um, you know, just trying to enjoy myself, um, enjoying time with some family. I got some family coming in town today, actually, yeah. and um, the mother-in-law. So it's going to be good to see her. The team is doing well. Jackie's always positive and he's a guy who appreciates every moment. Well, right now is a good time to be on the Red Sox. Uh, you guys are putting up some special numbers, especially you as well. What is it like being in the clubhouse right now? It's, it's a lot of fun, that's for sure. Um, winning definitely brings a team close together, and obviously we've been able to put together some, some wins and some pretty big wins. It's, 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 it's very exciting in the clubhouse, and I think a lot of guys are having fun with it. Well. For me, I've been watching you a lot, and one thing I like about you is every time I see you, you're always on an even kill. Tell me, how do you keep yourself connected? How do you stay grounded? I, mean, I think um, I was always told um, you should be the person when someone looks at you that they should never be able to tell whether you're losing or you're winning. That way, you know, you don't experience the, the ups and, and the downs. It don't, you don't let it affect you. But um, I think it just pretty much comes down to, um, like I said, the perspective on life. I think I'm, I'm, I'm blessed to be in a position that I am, um, to get the opportunities that I get to have, to see the different things I get to see. Um, a lot of people would love to be in this position, so I make sure that I appreciate every single moment. Even though Jackie is a closed book, he's pretty open about how much he loves his family and obviously his favorite meal of the day, breakfast. Do you have a pretty closed life? Do you get out? Do you enjoy the city of Boston, or what do you do here? Um, yeah, I am pretty pretty closed. Um, I don't really like to, I guess, be out in the public. I don't like attention. I want to be able to be that protector for my family. And once you become, you know, friends with someone and you, you build that trust, you know, things can go a lot farther from there. But like you said, I'm, I'm a pretty closed book, and um, I like it that way, though. Today we're having lunch. Uh, it's around 12.30. Usually, what time do you eat before a game? Um, usually, um, I'll, eat, I'll make sure I eat before I go to the field. Um, may it um, be breakfast. I warned you about breakfast. Don't even get Jackie started on his favorite cereals. Um, I would say my... Cereal. Cereal is... Cereal? Yeah, I'm, I'm a big cereal guy. I need it. I have to have it. What, what type of cereal? What's your favorite cereal or what have you? I have a few. Just to, just to just name a few. We got um, Frosted Flakes, Cinnamon Toast Crunch, um, Pops. We got um, Captain Crunch. Got to have the berries with it, too. Yes. Uh, I like that. I like Fruit that Loops. Too. Fruit Loops. Um, Waffle, waffle cone. Um, I uh, say, I say, this boy loves his cereal. <laughs> a few of us guys um, kind of are pushing for like a little breakfast club. A few of us will go out and um, try to get some breakfast at, you know, a nice little breakfast spot that we'll probably find on Yelp or something like that. Okay. We'll come back to the hotel and chill before going to the field. And then when we get to the field, kind of just 
getting into that baseball mindset, um, and I probably wouldn't eat again until about three o'clock. Um, so, is that a big meal or just something to carry you over through the game? No, it's pretty. It's pretty big meals, um, both breakfast and, and lunch, and. Then after, for me, I'm a little different. Like directly after the game, I feel like I can't eat that much just because my body's still kind of running off of adrenaline. So it takes me maybe 40 minutes to an hour after a game to really you know, I crush some food um, okay. after a game. Well, you're welcome to crush food here, so <laughs> grab something. Thank you, thank you. Um, also, you know, while we're talking about food or whatever, can you cook? Yeah. Yeah, I can cook. Well, um, what would be something Jackie Bradley would cook if I was coming over to your house for dinner? I guess it would all depend. Um, you know, whatever you say you would want, um, I think I could, I could whip chef? it up. Are you a chef, dog? I wouldn't say I'm a chef, <laughs> but I do know how to read. Oh, okay. Because I feel like, I feel like for, if for someone to say they can't cook just means they can't read directions. Right. There's so many different things out there you can look up that has the directions on them. All you have to do is read the directions, do exactly as it says. I think it'll it'll turn out pretty decent. Well, the directions right now are, we're gonna enjoy some of this great food here at Strega, so we're gonna be right back after this. JP Fuji Group is the largest operating Pan-Asian restaurant group in the Metro Boston area, with 10 varying concepts, including fine dining and fast casual atmospheres. Guests of any JP Fuji Group establishment can always expect the highest quality ingredients, innovative menus, and superior customer service. I want to give them a present. I want to give them a gift, and I love doing what I do. Nothing beats that feeling of give people something. I hope they can taste the love that I put on every single dish. My name is George Mumford, and I've been a Mercedes-Benz owner 16 years, and, and about 14 of those years I've been working with a particular salesperson, uh, TJ, and so when he came to Sadie's Benz of Burlington, I came with him. I love my experience uh, as a Sadie's Benz dealer because the service is immaculate. The vehicle is great. Right now and I have a, a GLE 350 2016, and it's, it's an amazing vehicle. It does everything but drive itself, and on some level it can do that with the cruise control. The thing about Mercedes-Benz is that it offers me an excellent product and what makes it so special about me coming to Mercedes-Benz of Burlington is because of my relationship with TJ and the excellent service and kindness, uh, courtesy that I get when I come here and that's why I continue to come to Mercedes Burlington. When I'm in Boston, I hang out with Sam Horn. What is your pregame? So when you're in Boston or whatever, and um, you're going dinners, just going to places, I know you're a movie guy. What's your favorite movie? Man on Fire. Um, what year did that come out? 2004. Who was in it? Denzel Washington, Dakota Fanning. Oh, well. Yeah, and Mark Anthony. If, you do if, like if, that. That's your favorite if, movie, huh? Favorite of all time. Uh, I advise everyone to go see that. So when you're not watching A Man on Fire, what are you doing in Boston? Um, relaxing. I'm um, chilling with the family. I like to go out and eat, try different places. Um, I tend to tend to venture off to the to the north end. So you like the north end? Yeah, yeah, north end, Italian district. Uh, oh, yeah, you're Italian yeah, guy? Yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> right. So we're gonna start trying to wrap this up. So I wanna ask you about superstitions. Do you have any? No, I'm not really superstitious. Um, but I know before I go to the, um, the plate, uh, um, every at bat, that I always write um, MM behind me. Um, representing um, my grandmother, uh, Martha, and uh, my, my best friend, Matt Say. Um, they both passed away. 
Um, so it's uh, kind of like a, a remembrance, um, letting me know that they always have my back, um, even through the tough times. Okay. Well, we would like to say here at What's Your Pregame, we got your back, Jackie. We'd like to say thank you for coming and having lunch with us today. When I hang out in Boston, I hang with Sam Horn. Thank you, Jackie, for sitting down with us. I'm Victoria Conti with the main ingredient. We're going to go back in the kitchen and see exactly what's in Jackie's dish. It's heating up in this kitchen. We're at Strega on the waterfront. We're going to go see what they got cooking. We're looking at the olive oil. What Italian kitchen doesn't have great olive oil? And of course, the port puerto and the marsala wine. And last but not least, the Grand Manier. The Grand Manier is a main ingredient in their scallop and shrimp appetizer, which is to die for. Okay, and then we go down here to the other main ingredients, which are cloves of garlic, of course, and some pine nuts and some other fresh ingredients that are locally sourced. So we're gonna turn around and see what the chef's doing. And we're gonna see, chef, are you making Jackie's dish? What does Calo the speciale de la casa? Ah, it sounds like that dish I was just talking about with the great Grand Manier ingredients. So um, tell me where that came from, like where that originated. Vena de Modelo. I have no idea what he just said. Can you help me with that? Absolutely, I'll be happy to help you with that. What he said was, what's your pregame? Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> with Jackie eating every kind of cereal there is, Buck grew up with a different kind of pregame. Buck, what would you eat before the game? Uh, nothing. Nothing? No, I... Uh... My dad was a, a coach and principal in the high school, and uh, I've kind of carried over, uh, you know, the routine he gave me. I'd get a piece of, you know, I played football, basketball, baseball. We just went from sport to sport to sport. I went to one of the smallest public schools in the state of North, in Florida, in Northwest Florida, and uh, before I'd play any game, I got a piece of dry toast, unsweetened tea, and maybe, if I was lucky, some dry flank steak or something or a piece of dry chicken and, you know, you were taught to play on a light stomach. We caught up with Joe Girardi and he gave us his secrets on keeping his players healthy. Hey, I'm Joe Girardi and when I'm in Boston, I hang with Sam Horn. What's your pregame? Um, you, you look at guys' strengths and how your guys match up. And, and I think the bottom line in sports is you always try to put your play, players in the best chance to have success. So that's what I'm always looking at. And I don't think weather changes a lot, but when it does get hot in summer, I think you have to watch guys and be careful. With the daily stresses of the game mentally, where does the X-Man hang out to become focused? Where do you take your mind and what do you do to, to, to relax? Probably the beach in Aruba, I take it. Oh. <laughs> Bases loaded, I'm thinking about the beach in Aruba. Uh, no, uh, I try to breathe a lot. I try to breathe. Uh, as I said, this game is this game is uh, it's pretty hard by itself, especially when you have fans uh, all counting on you to come up big, come up clutch in, a, in, a, in the time that's much needed. Yeah. Just try to breathe a lot and, and control your emotions. Just focus on the baseball and not all the distractions around it. Coming up next, a couple of local guys you might know share their insight on dealing with stress. Hi, I'm Sam Horn, and welcome to What Is Your Pregame, a new show full of flavor and with a little twist. When I'm in Boston, I hang out with Sam Horn. What is your pregame? We'll bring you up close and personal with some of your favorite CEOs, celebrities, and athletes to find out their pregame. We will take you behind the scenes at some of your favorite restaurants to find the best high-performance recipes. Hang out in the dugout as we talk pre-game prep with some of the game's best players and coaches. All this and much more on What Is Your Pre-Game? <laughs> You're watching What Is Your Pre-Game? We'll be right back after this.
My name is George Mumford, and I've been a Mercedes-Benz owner 16 years. And in about 14 of those years, I've been working with a particular salesperson, uh, TJ. And so when he came to Mercedes-Benz of Burlington, I came with him. I love my experience uh, as a Mercedes-Benz dealer because the service is immaculate. The vehicle is great. Right now, and I have a, a GLE 350 2016 and it's, it's an amazing vehicle. It does everything but drive itself. And on some level, we can do that with the cruise control. The thing about Mercedes-Benz is that it offers me an excellent product. And what makes it so special about me coming to Mercedes-Benz of Burlington is because of my relationship with TJ and the excellent service and kindness, uh, courtesy that I get when I come here. And that's why I continue to come to Mercedes Burlington. Hey, when I'm in Boston, I hang out with my man Sam Horn. What is your pregame? Up next with Sam Kennedy, is it fun or is it stress? Stress or fun? <laughs> which, which, one, which one is it? Or is it a little bit of both? It, it's a little bit of both. I think that's well put. You know, anytime you're in a, a position uh, in, in business, in professional sports and entertainment, there's a lot of stress that goes with it. Because look, we're very fortunate to be in these positions and you want to make sure that you're delivering on what you need to deliver for the fan base, for your employees, for the ownership group, um, uh, for yourself, hold yourself to a high standard. So um, there's, a, there's a lot of stress, but there's also a lot of fun. I mean, the advice that I give to people looking to get into business uh, is pursue your passion. I was passionate about Fenway Park, about baseball, and thankfully my parents allowed me to pursue what it was I was passionate about. So there's a lot of fun that goes along with working in professional baseball. All right, let's head back to the dugout and talk to a couple of players about how they handle stress. Where do you channel that pressure? Where do you put it in and where do you take your, your mind when you're trying to relax a little bit, especially going up there in the bottom of the ninth, bases loaded, two outs, tough guy on the mound. Where is your mind? Is it on that pitcher only or you try to slow everything down and go somewhere else? Yeah, I try to slow everything down, say we were in that situation. Um, you know, I also have to remember that there's a lot of pressure on that pitcher. You know, it's just not on me. So, um, try to really stay relaxed. And um, we have some uh, mental, mental coaches, mental skills coaches here, and you know, they they talk a lot, of, talk to us a lot about breathing. I'm um, in spring training, and you know, we have a lot of meetings about that. So, try to just remain, you know, calm, and just it's just another at bat, and just try to focus on that. When you're out there and you're on the field and it's a stress situation or whatever and you know you're coming up the bat, bottom of the ninth, adi, 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 how do you channel that, that stress and put it over here and make it a positive by going up there and being focused? Well, I just, I, I just understand the situation. Obviously, every at bat, this whole game is a pressure situation. A ball hit to you, the impact that you know, a normal fly ball can have on a game is big. So I just try to remember that I've done it before. Now I'll just go out there, take a deep breath, and get your job done. You know, and knowing that, hey, is it going to happen? Who knows, but give you best ever. Here with Roger Berkowitz of Legal Seafood. Roger, what is your pregame? So fish, what's your favorite fish? Oh, you know, that's like children. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can't never yeah. say, I got you. Uh, well, um, for you, yeah. do you have any tips on high performance recipes? Well, you know, I, I, I think we're lucky, number one, in that I think that seafood is the healthiest of all proteins. Um, there is one, fi uh, one dish, one seafood dish, or one seafood category, I think, uh, that is really superb, and that's oysters, raw oysters. There was a study done at Harvard a number of years ago that said that men in particular, when they had oysters, uh, always did better. They, particularly athletes, wow. all right? So in, wow. in, in sports, because the more that they exerted themselves, the more they sweat. And, but if you had a high uh, buildup of zinc in your system, which oysters have a lot of zinc, the higher performance level you attained. So I think that if I want to be on top of my game or I want to <laughs> do something, I will always have a plate of oysters. Mm-mm, that sounds good right now. Let's head back down to Fenway to see what some of the other players like. Being from San Diego, I know you have to have some ties to some good Mexican food. You're a roll taco guy. Big time, and also, I mean, it's roll tacos, carne asada burrito, my favorite is carne asada fries. All right, oh, yeah. is that something you would have before a game? No, 
No, no, no. That's it. That's an off day. Oh, that's, that's an off, off day? That's off Heavy? Day treat. Oh, my Lord. If you eat current shot of fry, anything from the taco shop, you, you need <laughs> at least 24 hours to recoup because that grease, and like I said, you don't know where that meat's coming from. It's going to might not sit well on you. No burritos. I got to eat light. I heard that from somewhere before. Um, I eat pretty light before before the game. Um, I mean, probably probably the same as you. I go peanut butter and jelly a lot. <laughs> Uh, some applesauce, um, you know, some fruit, things like that. But, you know, I don't, I'm not a big, you know, burritos or, or anything like that. You know, I just kind of light meal. Dustin, it won't be peanut butter and jelly, and it definitely won't be applesauce. We've, we've talked earlier about soul food. If we were to have some soul food, what kind of, what kind of meal would that consist of? Ah, man, that's tough. It just depends on how that, uh, Whatever, whatever they have, I have to look at a menu and see because there's so many different things Are that I can. Greens, uh, oh yeah, greens, macaroni and cheese, sweet potatoes, ham hog, ham hog, every I like. Don't know about that. I, 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 I was taught it, so I, I don't, I can't say I, I grew and knew automatically, but you know, I, I learned pretty quick. Let me ask you a question: Do you get around in the kitchen? Can you, can you cook? I used to, but you now ever since I. Pretty much ever since I started pro ball, I'll just get lazy, so I just order or you know order order soul food or order out versus cooking it myself. <laughs> since making the All Star team, Mookie doesn't need to cook, but there is someone who gets pretty serious about his skills in the kitchen. Well, Sam, I'm Jamaican, so it's gonna be some kind of Jamaican cuisine, you know. Um, I've been told my jerk chicken is like top. I should open a jerk chicken bar or something. So when you look at West Indian, I think of Jamaican or whatever. I think yeah. of rice and beans. So it's, it's rice and rice and peas. Oh, yeah, that's peas. that's what that's what that's what we do. That's so what we do. Tell us about that. What what what, what one of those meals look like? I mean, like? I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna go there, we, we got to talk about some oxtail. Then we, we got to talk about some jerk chicken. Uh, I'm big. I'm yeah, big and, and then we got to talk about uh, Jamaican beef patties. You ever had one of those? I haven't. Put it this way. Can you cook? Good enough. Good enough. What, you, what you, does you know, that mean? What you what you really you really want my mom's cookie. Uh, you, you, I mean, if you yeah, if you want to get the the full out Jamaican experience, you got to experience my mom's cooking. Uh, I try to eat breakfast as much as I can because it's obviously the most important meal. I'm sure. That's yeah, that's what they say. So uh, no, but a pregame meal here. Um, we'll get here, and um, you know you got stuff like pasta, um, you know some chicken, broccoli, things like that. To, uh, you know, prepare you for the game. Coming up next, we hit the streets outside of Fenway to find out what is your pregame. JP Fuji Group is the largest operating Pan-Asian restaurant group in the Metro Boston area with 10 varying concepts including fine dining and fast casual atmospheres. Guests of any JP Fuji Group establishment can always expect the highest quality ingredients, innovative menus, and superior customer service. I want to give them a present. I want to give them a gift. And I love doing what I do. Nothing beats that feeling of give people something. I hope they can taste the love that I put on every single dish. Hi, I'm Sam Horn, and welcome to What Is Your Pregame? A new show full of flavor and with a little twist. When I'm in Boston, I hang out with Sam Horn. What is your pregame? We'll bring you up close and personal with some of your favorite CEOs, celebrities, and athletes to find out their pregame. <laughs> we will take you behind the scenes at some of your favorite restaurants to find the best high-performance recipes. Hang out in the dugout as we talk pregame prep with some of the game's best players and coaches. All this and much more on What Is Your Pregame? <laughs> You're watching What Is Your Pregame? We'll be right back after this.
I'm Mookie Betts. When I hang out in Boston, I'm with Sam Horn. What is your pregame? Welcome back. We're going out on the streets of Boston and we're going to ask people, what is your pregame? Tell me a little bit about yourself. Where are you guys from? We're from um, Burlington, Vermont area. Ah, yeah. lovely. Yeah. We're from Phoenix, Arizona. You're from Phoenix. And you came all the way from Phoenix to go to the game today? Yes. <laughs> Pretty um, much. How many times have you been to Fenway? None. Um, first time. First time. Maya and Andy, I see you're going to be on different sides of the fence we are, always. today. Yes. So, where are you guys from? Palatine Bridge, New York. New York? Yes. How'd you become a Royals fan? I hate the Yankees. And in the 70s, it okay. was, the Royals were beating up on the Yankees, so okay. I started doing that way back then. Okay. So what do you do professionally? I'm a teacher. You're a teacher? Music teacher, yes. Music teacher. Yes. Uh, I'm an engineer, so I'm a product engineer uh, oh, for great. microchip te technology. Interesting. I work for the Hartford. For the so Hartford. I was actually in Connecticut last week for work. So I'm a safety guy. I work oh. in insurance loss control, and I go out in South Texas and work with oil companies. What do you do to get yourself pumped up in the morning? What do you do? Um, get out of bed and drink lots of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> What's your routine in the morning? Getting ready for work. What's your uh, pregame? So I own a ranch, so I gotta wake <laughs> up, I gotta feed my goats, my uh, Really? Chicken, alpaca. Uh, alpaca, you alpaca. know. Alpaca. <laughs> and then uh, get my coffee going and then head to work. I'll get up, check emails for work, eat a dozen eggs, half pound of bacon, start my day from there. A dozen eggs and a half a pound of bacon. So tell me, what did you do for your pregame coming to Fenway? You went to the Museum of Science today. Nice. So tell me about the Museum of Science. What did you do there? Um, we saw a lightning show. A lightning show? How lightning is created? Yeah, and they made lightning in it. Oh, wow. It. Rock Bottom. Rock Bottom, the brewery, brewery yeah. right down the street. Uh-huh. Yeah, had some beers there. Favorite beer? Um, a red beer. Red yeah, they're red beer. Yep. They're red beer. Red, that red was really good. Started off at Sam, Samuel Adams Brewery. Ah. Uh, so we got we got a few beers in there. Uh, we did the tour, uh, did the sampler. Great. So we took uh, three different types of beer. Got a little tipsy there. Yeah, and then tipsy. Headed on over to uh, Hooper uh, Hooper Brewery. Oh, Har 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 Harpoon. 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 We've never heard of the beer. Uh, Harpoon. Brewery. I never heard of that beer. Well, thank you both for yeah. joining us, and you're watching. What is your pregame? My name is Sam Horn, and I'd like to say thank you to Jackie Bradley Jr., our guest today. I'd like to also say thank you to our sponsor, Dagar Insurance and Del Fresco Steakhouse. To see more content, go to whatisyourpregame.com and send in your videos, and you too can be on What Is Your Pregame. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Ready? Yeah. When I'm in Boston, I hang out with Sam Horn. I just want to know, what is your pregame? Sounds good, but can you point at him? I don't, I don't like that. I, like I, don't, to, I don't do that. I like you to point. I don't, do, I, point. I don't do point. Are you serious? Mm, yeah. Okay. Okay, there you go. That's too I, much personality for me. I like that. Okay, well, I like that. Thank you very much.